Brian, thank you. Ten guns were stolen from a firearm shop in Southington over the weekend. Police are still searching for the suspects. NBC Connecticut's Dave Peck joining us live now with the latest. Six Connecticut's newest crime trend breaking into gun stores. It's happened multiple times recently. Yeah, shop owners are fed up and police are concerned with more stolen weapons on our streets. Southington police investigating a break-in at a gun shop. This happened at the Lock and Load Firearms Store early Sunday morning. News 8's Tim Harfman spoke with police and residents about this and the search for the suspects. Right now at 430, Connecticut criminals targeting gun shops. There's a potentially scary new trend of more stolen guns on our streets. Channel 3's Dylan Fearon is live now in Southington after a shop was broken into over the weekend. Dylan. Police in Southington are investigating right now the latest incident in a disturbing crime trend in our state. People are stealing guns. This is very disturbing. Channel 3 Eyewitness News reporter Marcy Jones joins us now live in Southington right outside of Lock and Load's firearms. And Marcy, this is really becoming a problem across the state, right? Absolutely correct. Good morning. In fact, in the last five weeks, we've seen eight gun store break-ins take a look. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I know I'm a few days late with putting a video out, a lot going on. So, before we get too deep into the weeds with what's been going on in the news lately, everything dealing with 2A and all that, which I'll get to, I just want to say thanks for supporting the channel. If you're interested in helping us out here, the best way is always going to be buying the merch. Obviously, it's down in the description below. Like, share, hit up the comment section, start a dialogue, and if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and toggle the bell and make sure you're getting all the notifications every time a new video is put out by this channel. For those that asked, I saw a few comments. How was Freedom Ballistics' grand opening? It went great. There's a the brand new FFL on the block. They don't have a lot of overhead going on right now. However, there is a bunch more stuff available via their website. You go to the website, order it, it is shipped directly to them, and then you just show up and pick it up. That simple. So, if you are interested in purchasing some new tools or other equipment, ammunition, things of that nature, go ahead and give freedomballistics.com a look. Uh, we'll put their link down below and uh, help Steve out, help him grow since they're the new kids on the block. All right, so into the video. So all of you know, um, I'm sure you've seen the news locally, that uh, there's been a rash of break-ins at local FFLs. Uh, I think it's reported there's been like um, eight break-ins or attempts some successful, some not, in the past five weeks at various FFLs. Now, some of those have been successful with numerous firearms being stolen. Some people have been caught, others have not, and they're still at large, and the investigation is going on. All right. Most recently in Southington, lock and load was broken into with about 10 handguns stolen. One was recovered shortly after they found the vehicle, or the getaway vehicle. Um, as they were leaving, the police were showing up, like, within seconds. Uh, the reason the police did not pursue is, well, it's a non-pursuit state. And even the police came out and said in a statement that it wasn't a violent felony. They're not going to pursue. So that's how that works. You get what you vote for, guys. You don't want the cops. Chasing down the bad guys, there you go. That, they're just going to do stuff, run, and nobody chases them. Other than them, recently, Wolf's in Bristol was broken into. I think, believe it was uh, seven guns were stolen from there. And, of course, Hoffman's uh, robbed again uh, past couple of months. Uh, 30 guns were stolen from there. They did caught the, uh, the idiot that did that. Um, he's from Willimantic, go figure, and they are definitely throwing a bunch of charges at him. 
One of them, I think, has a maximum sentence of like 20 years in prison. Are they going to push it that far? Highly doubt it. I saw on the news a couple of weeks ago that uh, somebody was arrested. They had a bunch of stolen guns, you know, which is like a minimum of 10 years in prison. And they pled it down. He only got about two years in prison. All right, these little hood rats don't care. Two years in prison is nothing. Who else? Let's see. Statewide Pawn and Armory. They were robbed. All right. So in the past five weeks, like I said, eight gun stores have been broken into or attempted to. So places from Bristol, Monroe, Norwalk, obviously Southington, all these places have been targeted. All right. What is going on? Well, it's pretty simple. Weak on crime or soft on crime, however you want to talk about it. Um, it. It's a proven fact that when you don't prosecute these criminals to the fullest extent of the law, you're just encouraging this behavior. When you don't pursue them, when they know they can get away, when in some places they're arrested and released the same day with, with hardly any bail, you're, you're just encouraging this behavior. All right, How do you fix that? Well, you need a hard reset. You need to get rid of everybody that's in office, start over. That's what our vote is for. So I'm sending in my little soapbox right now. Come November, get your asses out there and vote and vote appropriately. All right. Lots of civil unrest expected this summer. It's going to be another summer of love. So there's that. So be vigilant. Keep your heads on a swivel. No. Where is all this coming in? So the last video we were talking about New York's ban on Glocks because of the Glock switch. Because now all of a sudden the Glock switch is becoming very prevalent, right? It, it's, it's out there and it's, it's becoming synonymous with ga uh, gang culture and all that stuff. Well, from all these FFLs that are being broken into, they are stealing Glocks. And they're not just stealing, like, any Glock. They're stealing only the Glocks that are compatible with the switches, right? So they're out there. They're looking for these things. Be mindful, all right? Um, one of the places that were broken into, they left a lot of more expensive merchandise behind even though it was hanging on a wall you know they just left it behind and maybe they're too dumb they don't they don't want an m1a scout or something i don't know um others pre-bands that are being sold out of state all that type of stuff all was left behind and they're going after specific things so it is definitely targeted right i don't think it's just random acts of this that or the other thing For Southington, the car that was used as a getaway vehicle was a stolen vehicle. Go figure. Connecticut has a rash of stolen vehicle problems. Cars being stolen left and right. Again, weak on crime, not fully being prosecuted. You're going to get this behavior. That being said, guys, there is a massive uptick of car breaks in, break ins and car thefts. If you are a knucklehead and you leave your gun in your car unattended, you are just stupid. Do not leave your firearms behind. If you have to lock them up in your vehicle for some reason, make sure you have a safe. Make sure the safe is hidden, it's bolted down, tethered, what have you. Make sure it's very hard to get to and get into. Don't be a moron and just leave your gun out. Don't buy these stupid little magnets that mount in your car where you put your gun. People have been doing smash and grabs. Lock your cars at night. Just, just like no-brainers. All right? <clears throat> For all those people in the comment section that are just running their mouths about how, how these FFLs, because like I said, there's been a rash of break-ins. These FFLs need to put bars on their windows and have roll down cages, this, that. Listen, I have not been into an FFL anywhere in the state of Connecticut that doesn't have all of that stuff. 
they harden these places up to the best of their abilities. Now, some places they are limited to because they don't actually own the building. So you can't start retrofitting all these things. You got to do what you can, best way you can. Now, for the one in Southington, they have bars. Like, you have to be a small little crackhead to fit through the gap. And that's what happened. You can find the videos online. The owner has released them on their social media. It's all over WFSB, WTNH, Fox 61. And you can see the, the police are calling them these youths that did it. I don't know. I don't care. But they were smaller in stature, like crackhead skinny, and they are able to fit through everything. So that being said, be mindful. All right? Make sure you lock your stuff up, too, at home. And I, I know it's the law. I'm just letting you know. If you are not in control of it, do your due diligence, right? The the way the law is written, it's got to be a reasonable person. Well, you know, putting it in a drawer, shutting the drawer is not safe. Now, I wish I could, like, oh, you should be able to leave your guns all over the place. Yes, I'm a firm believer in that. I, I think, you know, we should make it illegal to break into play. Oh, that's already illegal. We should make it illegal to steal the gun. Oh, that's illegal, too. Hmm. So, okay, we know it's not the law-abiding citizen that's the problem. It's the criminals. And that just goes to show you that all these gun laws that they pass just aren't working. Which makes me think, with the rash of crime going on, even though the good Governor Lamont says crime is down, I'd say it's not. All the stats say that it's up and it's getting worse. I'm just curious, what new gun laws are they going to try to push on us this next legislative session to curb our rights as law-abiding citizens, make us the criminals, yet leaving the regular criminals alone and letting them, letting them do whatever they want? See, that's the problem. So, take that how you will. You got your ability to help fix this in the next coming months. Don't squander it away. Get out there. Do your job. There's not much else going on. I just wanted to do a quick video, kind of give you guys an update that, in case you didn't hear, there's been some break-ins, and there's been a lot of them. So be vigilant out there. Make sure you're carrying your EDC. Make sure you're getting your training on. The weather is starting to get nicer-ish. I mean, it's the end of May, and I was wearing a sweatshirt yesterday. This is insane. It's so much global warming, it's cold. However, the weather is getting nice. A lot of training companies in our state are gearing up for the summer season. Get your training in this year. Definitely... Take a serious look at getting your self-defense insurance. I, I'm not going to shill for any company out there. There's a lot of them out there. Do your due diligence. But if we have renter's insurance, homeowner's insurance, car insurance, fire insurance, things, why not have self-defense insurance? It just makes sense. I'm not sponsored by any of them. Yes, I am an instructor for USCCA. I don't think you need to, that's the one you need to buy. You do your due diligence, you do your research, but get something. Because you are in Connecticut, and they do not like you as the gun owner. They despise you, and I guarantee you, these little hood rats get caught, they're going to get a slap on the wrist, released back into the community. You, however, you get in trouble, you do some self-defense, anything like that happens, not only are they going to throw the book at you, but they are going to make an example out of you. So, hedge your bets, cover your six, protect your ass, however you want to look at it. Look into some sort of insurance for yourself. All right, that's all I really have for this video. I will see you guys in the next video. Before you leave, make sure you, you tickle that like button, leave a comment for me, and I'll see you guys later.